The quality of our democracy is bound to the quality of our journalism. That's what CBS News veteran Scott Pelley says in his brand new book, Truth Worth Telling, a reporter's search for meaning in the stories of our time. You can normally see Pelley on Sunday evenings on 60 Minutes, but he's here with me a little earlier with, uh, right now. Scott, thanks for coming on. Brian, great to be with you on Reliable Sources. Thank you. Uh, here in Chapter 19 of the book, you write that you believe the fastest way to destroy democracy is to poison the information. How poisoned do you think our information environment is right now? This is the thing that worries me the most about our beloved country. We have gone from the information age into the disinformation age. And as you were discussing earlier in the program with the Nancy Pelosi video, I think our viewers and our readers now have a responsibility that they've never had before. And that is they have to be careful about how they choose their information diet. Uh, this is going to be a problem for the rest of of our history, and it's a problem in particular for democracies. Do you see the CBSs and the CNNs of the world as living up to the challenge, or are we way too far behind? No, I think we are living up to the challenge, and this program this morning is a great example of that. You just dismantled the Nancy Pelosi video, and that's what we have to do as journalists. We have to tell the mm -hmm. truth, tell it again. Tell it again and tell it again because the American people have to have reliable information to make decisions about our country. There is no democracy without journalism. And what are you hearing on your book tour from readers, from, from people? Do you hear the population just completely confused about what to believe? Yes, very much so. What are we supposed yeah. to do, people ask me. And what I tell them is, and it's a little bit self-serving, but I tell them to go to brand name sources of journalism. CNN, CBS, NBC, The New York Times, The, the Los Angeles Times, whatever you want to do. But if you see something on the Internet that you wonder about or that outrages you, then do what has never been possible before. Look at a variety of other sources. Spend 10 minutes figuring out whether that story is true. I wonder what CNN is saying about that. I wonder what the Chicago Tribune is saying about that. And triangulate your information. Like I said, our viewers mm -hmm. have never had to do that in history. And today, it's going to be mandatory. How much do you think President Trump has contributed to this confusing climate? How much, how much blame do you put? Well, you know, I wonder whether this climate that we're in made Donald Trump possible rather than Donald Trump making this climate possible, if you see what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, you yeah, know, people, yeah. have, people have begun to worry. We live in a time today, Brian, as you well know, where what is true can be made to seem false, and what is false can be made to seem true. And that allows our national leadership to start saying things like fake news and the media is the enemy of the American people. We are the American people. Madison said that freedom of the press is the right that guarantees all the others. He knew that as long as we could say what we wanted to say, write what we wanted to write, read what we wanted to read, then all of our rights would be protected. It is just that important. Mm. And Scott, while I have you, a question about CBS, your day job there. Uh, 18 months of, of scandals and shakeups at CBS News and the rest of the company. What has it been like for you and your colleagues? Uh, now, of course, as a new news president, a new boss at 60 Minutes, everything's changed. Well, we've, we've been through a dark period of the last several years of, of incompetent management and sort of a hostile work environment within the news division. Um, I lost my job at the evening news because I wouldn't stop complaining to management about the hostile work environment. But as you say, now everything has changed. We have a new chairman of CBS Corporation, Joe Ionello, a visionary leader. We have the first woman president of the news division, Susan Zarinsky. And I've known her for 30 years. She's been at CBS more than 40 years. She has CBS yeah. News DNA. And now we have a new, new uh, executive producer, Bill Owens, at 60 Minutes. And uh, it's, it's all blue sky from here. I'm very excited. I know these people, and I know that we're on the right track.
You were replaced by Jeff Glor on the Evening News. Now Nora O'Donnell's replacing him. You say you lost your Evening News job because you were complaining about hostile work environments? Uh, that, that's true. I, uh, many, uh, several years ago, four or five years ago, I went to the president of the news division and explained to him that this hostile work environment couldn't go on for women and men. And he told me if I kept agitating about that internally, then I'd lose my job. And I went to his boss, who told me that he didn't share my concerns. And so, having exhausted the possibilities in the news division, I went to the chairman of the CBS Corporation, who listened to me very concerned for an hour, asked me some penetrating questions about what was going on. I didn't hear back from him, but uh, in the next opportunity in my contract, I was let go from the evening news. And that chairman, Les Moonves, no longer there either, uh, of course, uh, brought down by sexual harassment scandal himself. Uh, so you look ahead, Scott, you are feeling much more positive, it sounds like, about the news division. Absolutely. Like I said, I know all of these news pe these, these new people. Yeah. I've known them for decades. And they are people of the highest principles. They are people of public service. And I couldn't be more excited about the future of CBS News than I am right now. Public service. We need more. Two of those words we need to use more often. Public service. That's what it is. Uh, Scott, thank you so much. Best of luck with the book.